careful. You might not want to listen because there are side effects to Team CBT. Welcome to Talking Team CBT, where you'll hear stories from therapists and clinicians around the world on their journey and experience with Team CBT. Came across Team, how'd you get involved with Team? So I've known uh, Dr. Burns uh, for a long time. Uh, actually, we co-presented uh, like 20 years ago in some conference in San Francisco. Oh, nice. And he... Um, and at that time, his presentation was about addressing resistance in therapy, and it was fascinating. But at that time, I didn't see any of his workshops being offered uh, of hand. But then, um, and then I started receiving uh, information about his intensives, and I ignored one, ignored the second, <laughs> and and you know, ignored. I don't. I cannot say ignored, but you know. Busy. Are busy, but definitely it was on my mind. I really, I uh, made a check mark point on this. Yeah, I definitely want to attend it. And my wife, who is also a psychiatrist, Alexandra uh, Virga, she is uh, so she's also a cognitive behavior therapist. And so we decided to go. It was 2017 when we attended the San Francisco intensive, um, and it was fantastic. And it, we learned a lot. And it, I was slow to incorporate it. You know, like uh, my egos, uh, you know, like four deaths of the therapist ego. Uh, so my, my egos were dying slowly. <laughs> uh, but I started using testing and uh, some methods. And then I worked um, individually. I had um, mentorship and supervision from Daniel Minty. Okay. Uh, uh, with whom I had... Uh, uh, several dozen sessions, I mean, uh, practically weekly. Um, and that is how I progressed uh, in this. And eventually he told me that, okay, well, since we are working, maybe we'll do the level three uh, exam. And I, my examiner was Tayan. Nice. Uh, she's wonderful. I mean, I, in, in the meantime, I went through like, uh, I also I did a lot of FGI uh, online training. Um, uh, San Francisco Intensive was in person, so it was fantastic. So, yeah. and yeah. I missed the in person part. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah. And then, let me tell you, just between you and me, and everybody who's listening, <laughs> <laughs> the best Team CBT training I attended where it was in Warsaw in August 2022. <laughs> yeah, tell us about that. <laughs> so. It, it really happened uh, unexpectedly. I mean, uh, since I was in supervision with Daniel, even after my exam, uh, he suggested that um, maybe we organize some training. And I wanted to bring Team CBT to Poland from the very beginning. I mean, I've been teaching cognitive behavior therapy and bringing different courses to Poland since 1992. Uh, Mm -hmm. and, and bring different uh, uh, therapy trainers. Actually, in 1992, I brought Maxi Mosby um, twice that year. And, and, I, and so it so happens that also David, um, a book, uh, Feeling Good, um, we, was, we may, uh, was appearing in July. It was a new edition, a Polish new edition, updated Polish new edition. And he, we were very happy. And th th so with Daniel and Yehuda, uh, we decided to, to do it in August. But unbeknownst to me, Daniel started inviting people. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I thought, the three of us can do a great job in doing a four-day intensive workshop. Well, right, that's right. plenty. But, uh, but Daniel invited uh, uh, 12 others, so 14 faculty members uh, that, from all over the world, primarily California, but also from New York and Canada, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, from Mexico and India and the UK. Uh, so we had trainers from all over. And, and of course, when you have so many trainers, it is more work for the organizer. <laughs> yes, <for sure. laughs> so, so it it complicated my life, but it turned out to be wonderful training and fantastic. And also, 
uh, almost like a retreat for the faculty because we were able to bond. Many of us met for the first time in real life. Uh, we knew each other from Zoom and multiple meetings over Zoom. Actually, I met Daniel for the first time in person <laughs> in Warsaw. So even though we, we, we fly had, across the, 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 the globe to the meet party. up. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, so yeah, so that was an excellent uh, learning experience and discussions that we had in the evenings and uh, doing travel because afterwards we took a trip to Krakow together and mm. and some of us to the Dansk and that was really and and yeah we visited also Auschwitz so that was really a powerful visit and and bringing team and and using team with each other during this process it is wonderful because uh, that reminds me of other methods like the Simonton therapy and and the RBT and also the electrical behavior therapy by Marshall Linehan mm. the, the way it therapists communicate is by using the language and methods of that particular uh, 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 particular form of the therapy, uh, and the team uh, CBTers uh, talk to each other according to five secrets yeah. of effective <laughs> communication. So it is a uh, delightful. So that's I mean that's just heartwarming, and uh, it sounds like a lot was thrusted upon you on your plate to organize this in <laughs> Poland. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was funny uh, because I learned over there that it was the first uh, World Congress of Team CBT. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was organizing as a four-day workshop intensive, right? But it turned out it, to be a, it morphed uh, a Congress. <laughs> it, <laughs> well, that's kind of the thing about Team. Team is always growing and changing, so it's kind mm. of appropriate that even your your workshop would grow and change. <laughs> yes, that was uh, yeah. that was intense. Yeah, always adapting. We're always we always say fail as fast as we can and work through the tools that that are most effective for you. So it sounds like Daniel was just you know working through the tools and figuring out what would work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, believe me, I failed multiple times uh, prior and during and after that workshop. So <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was quite um, quite a bet, and I know da David had wanted to be there and was wasn't able to. So uh, David was present with us for the Q&A session on the third day. And it nice. was perfect because uh, after three days, people really were exposed to all the, um, the concepts and uh, several methods. And so they, their questions were really very specific. And uh, on top of that, uh, Mark Noble also connected with us uh, to give us the scientific very part of uh, the basis for or neurological or neurophysiological right. cognitive yeah, and your yeah. science basis for team CBT. So. Yeah, and it's great to have some of the science behind it. I know um, the one thing about our field, and and there's hopefully with the, our listeners are from all over in different walks of life. I know we've had we're trying to have life coaches and nurses and doctors and psychiatrists and psychologists on board because unlike you know traditional sort of one box type of therapy, team is very lends itself to a lot of different. Um, roles uh, that people have, occupations even, um, mm -hmm. and so it's pretty pretty cool. Um, yes, that was uh, wonderful because we also had uh, Steve Reinhardt and Victoria Chikorio uh, to present on uh, low impact, uh, low intensity I... CBT. Uh, done with by non-professionals. Uh, they both are um, teach. So Victoria is teaching non-professional uh, promotoras in Spanish uh, a, how to to promote uh, cognitive behavior uh, interventions in their communities because these people very often won't can afford and definitely the stigma is too high to see a psychotherapist. And Steve Einhardt, is, he himself is he's not a therapist, but he is uh, an electrician, as he says. Yeah. And and he is doing pastoral um, uh, team CBT. So with his pastoral uh, counseling, he's using that. So uh, so non professionals are also uh, uh, welcomed, and really, and it is similar to my other mentors who didn't cherish titles, mm. but they looked at skills. So right. it is competency-based training. So it means uh, the skills are important and, and how you relate with people and how you apply. 
uh, these skills um, according to five rules, five, five secrets of effective communication. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, speaking of applying the tools, can you can you give our listeners and viewers uh, an area where, um, like a specific example of how team has you know either improved your practice or how you might have used it with someone? I can tell you uh, one example. Um, so it is very relatively fresh because, as I said, uh, I have this uh, program, Be, uh, Beat the Odds, uh, mm -hmm. which is 10, two and a half hour sessions once a week. Um, a, that we, we sessions, we, I like to call them classes. So it is a course, we have classes, we teach skills. Mm -hmm. And it is less intimidating because everybody. Uh, went to school. I mean, most people, even those homeschooled, had lessons, right? Yeah. And had classes, and so these are more like lessons uh, uh, that that you are learning. And uh, and uh, we are teaching uh, cognitive behavioral self help. But for some people, uh, this cognitive behavioral self help is not enough. And um, uh, one of uh, and I uh, usually offer also individual therapy for the participants, and uh, and one of the participants wanted to to work with me, and uh, he had uh, significant uh, challenges, um, a actually lifelong depression uh, and social anxiety, uh, as well as um, several failed uh, relationships, and. Um, and now also fear of retirement, uh, what's going to be because practically work was the only social uh, connection that he had. And so that was uh, quite a challenge. So it turns out that he had lifelong issues and, um, and we started uh, trying to work. And for him, a really very eye-opening was positive reframe of his negative emotions because mm -hmm. he, he his agenda was to get rid of those negative emotions i sure. i hated he hated his social phobia that uh, he hated his fear of dating he hated his depression he hated hopelessness and um and so it was uh, it was quite important uh, that we start working and it was incredible because with testing, you could see how his scores were improving uh, from session to session. And actually in sessions, uh, one hour session, uh, with one hour session, but he was very good with his homework. And uh, in six sessions, there was complete resolution of his all symptoms. Uh -huh. And just a month ago, I had a, a, a reminder session um, uh, with him uh, and uh, it turns out that he has a very active social life. Uh, like he actually befriended some lesbian couples, and because that is uh, very non friend non, non like he wanted to have more female connections because he, as an engineer, he had many male friends, <laughs> and, <laughs> and 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 lesbian couples were good for him because they were they, they would, would not involve romantic involvement for him. Right, right. <laughs> why, why, why added femininity to to the panel of his friends and uh, he actually connected with his male friends uh, those female friends and so um so that is you know long beach is very diverse so you can find any type of a friend that you want uh, but people actually still suffer uh, loneliness so i think mm. team is such a wonderful thing uh, and uh, you know his uh, daily mood logs were so elaborate and actually contained like 15 or more uh, beliefs, uh, in negative thoughts that we were addressing during the session and, and formulating new ones, healthy ones. Uh, that was uh, incredible. So, but he applied himself between sessions so incredibly. Uh, so that was, that was a great experience. And I really uh, think that the, but because he had both anxiety and mood symptom, he had also mm -hmm. a, a relationship uh, problems, and uh, there was a habit um, of uh, really declining all social invitations. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. so, so he would say he also he had the habit to say yes and decline in the last minute. But he uh. also he would, he would overcommit himself. He had to overcommit himself to at work, so he would be overworked. Uh, 
uh, and particularly that he, he was planning to retire, so he, he, uh, he felt obligated to take more upon himself and he would be overworked and really not in the mood of, for social interaction. So, so saying no to work and yes to social interactions was also another habit. So uh, thanks to team and its conceptualization, and uh, we were able to address all these issues. And he actually applied it because I taught him how to, he could become his own therapist <laughs> in the process. I, I love that about team, right? Is we're, we're trying to infuse skill building into our clients and our patients so that they can be their own therapists. Um, and that this exactly. is a lifelong journey, not just for the one issue that they might've brought up uh, when they came to us, but also, you know, for things that come up in the future. Um, so I just, it's, it's very flexible and it's very, well written in a way that we can train and teach our clients not just you know it's that whole you know teach a man to fish rather than just feeding them stir fry <laughs> um, exactly <laughs> like didn't the, say that like right point, but, yes yeah yeah mm -hmm. well i i would love to talk with you more but we're we're running low on on time here um if if there were if all the therapists and 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 uh, non therapists in the world were listening, what's one thing about team you'd want them to know? That I think team speaks to and resonates with uh, deep nature of our uh, psyche or a soul or whatever, uh, uh, deep human nature. So it speaks to. Uh, and awakens uh, important things in us. And the more you tr engage in this, the more it transforms you. Mm -hmm. So for those therapists out there who want to learn team, beware, it's going to change you, but for the better. <laughs> yeah, well, I, that kind of reminds me, you were talking about the four deaths, you know, the four deaths mm -hmm. of egos. Um, and it is, it, it's, it's pretty hard to practice this way and, and not be practicing on yourself and make yourself a, a more better, joyful person. But yeah, it, it does have effects. So may... There are side effects to team. <laughs> <laughs> Desirable side effects. Desirable. Because you see, each death of an ego, as David says, is also rebirth. We are born right. anew, but free of that ballast that we are carrying around so i think that is uh, very important so don't don't worry yes your egos are going to be dying but you are going to be reborn uh is much fresher mm -hmm. and uh, uh, with more energy and inspiration and freedom to yeah. really be for your patients without your own agendas but but exactly follow what the, your patient needs but thank you so much for joining us today. It really was a real pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much, Angela. Always a pleasure talking with you. And I hope that after years of knowing you online, finally we are going to meet in person too. So uh, thank I would you. Love that. All right. Thank you. Bye -bye. And all the best to all the listeners. Bye-bye.